Hi everybody, welcome to today's Soon Zone stream. Um, last week we had a little bit of, um, uh, we had no stream because Aaron got sick, but that's okay. We are back at it. Today we have uh, Ryan Crapo with us. Uh, um, Ryan is the principal bassoonist with the Houston Symphony and she has been since 2007 um, for 13 years. She grew up in the east of Austin in a small inten intentional community. Um, after studying at the University of Texas at Austin with Christian Wolf Jensen, she attended Rice University where she received her master's degree under former Houston Symphony uh, principal bassoon Benjamin Caymans. In 2001, she was awarded a Federation of German slash American Club Scholarship which led to a year of study and performances in Germany and was a finalist in the G.A. Fox International Bassoon Competition in both 2004 and 2006. Ryan is also the author of a book about bassoon reed making published in 2017 called The Banana of Life. Uh, and she and her husband, Sean, have three children. Um, so welcome, Ryan. Thank you for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, so, I mean, how are you doing? Um, we have quarantine <laughs> and everything going on. But, yeah. yeah, we've finally, finally started um, having concerts again, but it's really weird to sit really far away from people and can't see the string players' faces and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, strange. definitely. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, speaking of the banana of life that you wrote, my teacher Karen has referenced that so many times. She's pulled it out in her lessons before. Um, so <laughs> cool. I just thought that was something cool to mention. But um, I won't drag it on for any longer. Um, and... Today we are going to start our master class with Chris Gonzalez, so I'm going to bring him up, introduce him. There he is. So, let's see. Oh, I got to bring bring Chris up. There it is. Um, yeah, so hi Chris, go ahead and introduce yourself and then we'll play everyone you're recording and then um, get started. Hi, my name is Chris Gonzalez and I'm starting my master's this fall at the McGill University studying with Stefan Lefebvre. Great. So I'm going to play everyone your Mozart. Um, uh, Chris is going to be playing the exposition of the Mozart Concerto. And yeah, here it is. <laughs> So that was the um, recording, so I'll just let you guys get started with our little mini master class here. Cool, thanks. Well, first of all, a nice job, Chris. There's a lot of really great things there, really great articulations, um, and some really nice musical phrases and lines that you were putting in there. Um, my main thought when I was listening to the recording that you sent me was um, that I wanted to work on sort of the underlying sound production and how that can serve you uh, musically. Um, let's just take the first measure. <laughs> the first measure is, you know, everyone's overthought that first measure for their entire length of their high school, <laughs> undergrad, and master's degree. <laughs> um, and we're often taught to play it as two down bows. Have you come across that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that how you are thinking of it, or do you have a different approach? Yeah, the two down bows. Okay. So a, a common misconception, I feel like what people... Uh, they think don't swell into the note and what to me what two down bows means 
is that the first note tapers off quickly and the first and second note are are the same at the beginning is that, so instead of like dum dum it's dum da di da dum da mm -hmm. do you understand there's like very slight difference there so can you and so in the recording i heard dum da di da dum da like a like a little swell on the half note and i actually hear that in other places as well um like dee da dee da dee da dee dum dee a little bit like that mm -hmm. um so can you play the first measure but i want you to spread it out so that each here i'll just demonstrate for you the the first two notes we're gonna we're gonna spread them out so that we have a lot of time to think about um how we're gonna shape that note so this is i call this resistance matching but we don't have to get into that so this is what it sounds like the first pitch the first b flat i'm gonna play four notes and those represent the entire first note does that make sense and then i'm gonna play like eight notes and that represents the half note so i'm dividing it into 16th notes here i'll, I'll just show you kind of increase a little bit at the end because I'm going up to that D. Mm -hmm. Did you okay. understand? So then the yeah. next time I do it, I would be like. And then when we go down to one, it's. Okay, I, you I think that? I understand. Yes, that's exactly the shape that I that I was um, referencing. So now, as you play that, listen to every single subdivision. I hear a little bit bum bum bum, like a little bit of an emming up of the pitch at the end of each note. So, mm -hmm. if that happens on every note, you're sure when you go bum bum, it's going to go bum bum, right? So right. do it again and make sure that it's very consistent from the beginning to the end of every note. That's much better. Yeah. Oh, you froze. Oh, now you're back. Okay. <laughs> That's much better. Now can you do it really, really, really legato so that you're not doing a lot of embouchure change in between the repeated articulations? Yeah. Very good. Now, can you do it like half of what you just did? So do two and then four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. And now can you do one? So like bomb, bomb, like, but slower than you norm than a normal tempo. Yes. I still hear a tiny bit of blah, blah, just, I mean, it's so slight. I'm exaggerating, obviously. Can you, can you try to make sure that the shape really starts bum, but not boom, boom. You can't even see my hands. Boom. It just should just go <laughs> bum like that. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really strong beginning to the note. It centers the pitch, it centers your vibrato, and it centers the harmonics sort of around where where you want that to start. So can you thinking about that and about not doing a lot of movement with your embouchure, can you just play the first up, uh, let's see, four bars up to the D? Okay. Yeah, 
Yes. Okay. So now, will you play it up to tempo? Okay, that's better. Um, the one, so there's something else. Um, our physicality is super related to our musicality. Um, and so something that I notice is that when you, you're, you're picking up the bassoon, um, and I know you, I don't practice standing very often, but you're going bum, 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 ba -dum, bum. <laughs> so that's actually going to make, um, it's going to make a difference in, in how that note speaks. So can you try to do the opposite? Can you let the bassoon feel bum, 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 bum? Um, actually going down a little bit. Okay. Great. And now can you do it in this tempo? Bum, 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 bum. Okay, that really sounds like one really nice, complete, simple phrase. Like it's not kind of overplayed. The one thing that is the hardest thing is getting that first B flat to taper and not sounding like ba ba, right? But you weren't, you, you weren't doing that before and I think I've kind of led you astray there. So when you are practicing, it's bum, bum, right? Can you just practice the first B flat playing da di da di? Yeah, don't don't pick up your bassoon. Just let it just into the floor, into your heels. Yeah. What does the pitch do there as you as you diminuendo? It goes sharper. It goes sharper. Okay. So what does that tell you about your reed? It tells me that my reed's too strong. Too strong. Okay. It could be too strong or it could be too weak. There <laughs> are two problems. Um, and I, I find that it could be either one. So are, is, are you in general, do you feel like the pitch is a little high? A little bit, yes. A little bit. Okay, so it probably is. If the general overall pitch is a little high, then it probably is a little bit too strong. Um, do, you do you have to keep your jaw really open in order to keep the pitch down? Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, in the middle third of the reed, the amount of cane there has a lot to do with the embouchure control. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but um, so it's really important to have a look at that and make sure that it's integrated exactly into the from the collar all the way to the tip, that there's no like bump or that there's no it goes down and then like drops off really sharply or something like that. So will you have a look at your read and tell me if there's something that you could do to that read that would um, allow you more flexibility in your embouchure? I mean, pretty much what you said, I think, um, I think as I use two tapers. Mm, okay. Um, which you probably, you could probably tell. Um, so maybe evening that out and getting more of one single even taper might be more useful. Maybe I'm I'm unfamiliar with the the Garfield and the Chris Lee stuff, so I don't I don't I don't want to like say that you need to you know go ahead and change your read style. I do find that in that middle third, if you need more flexibility and need more control over the over the opening of the reed and changing it as you move um, in a quick dynamic change, that that middle third is really gonna be key. So yeah. maybe let's not take the time to do it right now and we'll just practice on controlling it as is, but um, look at that middle third um, when you run into a situation like this um, and see if you can, you know, working either generally across the whole thing or just making sure like that it aligns with the back and the front third like really well in a nice taper.
Okay. okay. So that's great. Let's look at the, um, uh, where did the next spot go? Okay. Can you just, can you just play the whole first phrase now? Keep going. That's fine. I, I okay. meant I, I should have specified you, you, through you through forty three. So to the to the B flat. You can just start okay. there. Da -da -de -da -de -da -ba. Okay. Good. Um, I see you're using your pinky on B flat. That's great. That really stabilizes that note. Um, okay. The next most difficult and overthought part, for me at least, is that grace note G. That's, it's difficult to get it to speak and be really short. <laughs> um, and so the way that I would practice that is basically the same thing. Um, making sure that each note is a real note, right? Like not a grace note. Um, so I would go. Just, just pit. You can do three, just for time's sake. Um, I would, you know, do as many as you feel like you're learning something. <laughs> okay. Like if it's too many and you get bored, that's not helpful. And if it's not enough for you to actually learn something, then that's not helpful either. So somewhere in the middle. So you went ba ba be ba ba be ba ba be, so but you're not gonna go ba 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 ba. <laughs> right? You go da da. Be. Really, you're kind of like just expanding the whole phrase that you're trying to do. So do do it again like that. Okay, slow your brain down and now go. And there, that's that's where you're going, right? So each note is louder than the next, and you're not reaching your 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 goal until the the grace note D. Perfect, perfect. Okay, did the first G speak like you wanted it to? No. Okay, do it again. Just the, just like the first two notes. Go ahead, try it again. D do it until you don't shake your head. Do it until you nod your head. <laughs> that was nice. Are you are you using a tongue or are you using an air articulation? I'm using tongue. Um, okay. And I focus more on the corner of the reed. Oh, the corner of the reed. Okay. Um, that's fine. It seems to be working. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a preference. Some people tend to, ha -da 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 -da, you know, and some people, ta -da 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 -da, I, I, I tongue it, but, um, okay. So one more time, but now only two articulations. So da da -de -da -de -de da da -de da 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 So now, da da di da da. But make sure the G speaks, right? Nice. Okay. So now back up, play from the beginning, and play that whole phrase till the 43 or whatever, till the B flat. 
Really great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the clarity of the musical ideas and I like how um, how the support for the sound is really coming through now. It just seems it just seems really secure. I like that. Um, OK, can you keep going? OK. playing long notes and I I get the feeling that this this read maybe takes a little bit more more air um, to to get like the vibrations that you want mm -hmm. so you're maybe overplaying a tiny bit I get that feeling do you feel like that or am I totally yeah I agree yeah? for sure <laughs> okay so um, so that this is this is part of it and so when you're playing a long note in order to not feel it's like dee da ba, right? <laughs> Which I know that you don't want to play it like that. It is coming across as a little bit like, I've got to hold this note in or it's going to go sharp or flat or, or whatever you're worried about. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just like information for us, right? We take what we are able to do musically and we either say that's good enough or it's not good enough. And then we basically take that back to our read and make it do what we want it to do, <laughs> hopefully, or you know, adjust it or whatever we need to do. Um, so again, we're working with what you've got because it's a, we'll say this is a performance, right? And so you just you have to deal with what you have at the moment. So mm -hmm. let's do, um, when, when you play the long B natural to the B flat, are you diminuendoing or crescendoing? So I'm, I'm crescendoing and then diminuendoing on the B flat. To, down to the C? Yeah. That's dangerous. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> Can you play it again and make it really obvious? Where would you like me to start? Sorry. Um, let's go from uh. Ba -da -dee -da, um. From like the second half of forty six, like from the from the high at the okay. tenor F. Okay. <laughs> Okay, good. Yeah, that was much that was much clearer this time. Um, can you show me if you were to do this really, really slowed down? Because right now you're going, and then and then are you coming way back? What if we simplified that thought a little bit? Yeah. What if instead of da da di da 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 di da ba, right? There's a, it, it feels a little herky, just a little herky jerky. Um, what if we went da da di da di da bi da ba? Not too loud on the B flat. So it's like you're going up, you're coming back, and then you're going um, louder again. <laughs> What do you think? Does it work for you? I could get closer. I think that was. Not but you're not exactly. loving it. I think. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, so let's let's see. Um, what if we did that? What if you diminuendoed on the B?
That sounds nice. Because then you, you still have that sort of like sneaky B flat, right? Mm -hmm. I'm writing that in. Okay. <laughs> so is your low C supposed to be quiet? I mean, obviously we have to play it louder because it's in that low register and, and I know that's what you're doing, but like, is it is it in the diminuendo with the B flat or is it kind of like growing into that G? Both. Okay. <laughs> I'd say it's more related to the G than the B flat. Okay. So you're, you're kind of growing a little bit into the G? Yeah. Great. Okay. Let's hear it. Let's make it, re make it really obvious. Let me hear that. Great. Yeah. I think that sounds great. It's very clear. It's a very simple idea and it's really like, it's, it's well executed. Great. Um, can you, can you keep going with the, the trills? Okay, good. Um, can you play it once more and playing? I want you to move your arms out and turn your palms out, relax your collarbones out. Ah, okay, yeah. Re uh, throw out your elbows so that, that you, you're not like, ugh, like squeezing in. There you go. <laughs> okay, now you are grounded through your heels, but you are not stiff and you're not like pushing down or pushing up. Okay, so mm -hmm. feel everything really um, open inside your body, make a lot of space and try it one more time. Okay, what happened to your intonation when you did that? It was more solid, <laughs> uh, aside was. from that C sharp. <laughs> That's okay. It was also flatter, maybe? Yeah. It's, it's hard to tell over the computer, but it seems like it kind of brought the pitch center, like it's settled just a little bit. So when that happens to me, I know I'm holding tension, like unnecessary tension somewhere in my body, right? Mm -hmm. And if I'm doing that without even thinking about it, I'm like, oh, I'm sharp. And I scrape my reed and then I'm still sharp because I it's actually flat. So I have to put more tension into my body in order to counteract that. These are right. really little things that, I mean, you have to be so honest with yourself and constantly remind yourself of these things. I mean, I use like post-it notes, index cards, anything to be like, relax your body, put this, <laughs> this shoulder has got to stay down or whatever it is that you do. Like if you, if you, if you tend to like, I'm going to straighten my spine and you put your head like that, that's real bad. Don't do that. You know, it's, that's actually not, the head is balanced here, right? Not at the back so there's these are these are all things to remind yourself so i want you to try that one more time because it was it was so much more secure and grounded and and, and solid and focused but this time as you're playing i want you not to shift your weight side to side but i want you to very slowly feel like your spine is kind of doing this like just just enough movement to remind yourself that you have a spine and it's supposed okay. to move <laughs> Yeah, I think that sounds great. That sounds really good. How did you feel? Weird. A little weird, <laughs> okay. but, but, but it did feel Legit, a lot better. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> How's it? 
Okay, interesting. Well, I'm I'm curious to see how that then affects what you would do to this particular read because maybe it's not too strong. Maybe it's maybe it's strong, but somehow not heavy. It's just unbalanced in a way. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it'd be interesting to see how that works. Okay, so. I would work on, I work on technical passages the exact same way basically that I work on musical passages. And so I would play every single one of these notes like it's a real note with forward air, making sure the articulation is super consistent across all of the notes, incorporating my musical ideas. So mm -hmm. I'm not gonna play the whole thing because that'd be super long and annoying, but I am gonna start at um, uh, like the end of 53 on the G. Body beep beep, body beep beep, like that. Okay, and I'm gonna, so I'll show you how I incorporate the trill and then how I would do the, the F and the C after that. Okay. In the next part, okay. <laughs> same amount of repetitions in every note the harder ones get more repetitions notes that should be longer are going to have longer repetitions so i'm not going da, 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 da. i'm going da. like i know i have to sustain that sound on the f otherwise it, you know it gets real saggy and tends to cut out it's a really difficult note right mm -hmm. um so will you, will you do something something like that towards the end of this okay kind of play around with what speaks to you as like oh, i should do that one a couple of more times or i'm good on this one i can move forward Tell me something that you're noticing as you're doing this. This is really hard work and just, it's confusing and it, yeah. But just tell me what you're noticing. Slight inconsistencies in the articulation throughout the okay. duration of it. Sometimes okay. the beginning will be different. Sometimes the end will be different. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to listen for that. And then some notes take a little bit more intention than others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I find when I do this, it is just extremely revealing about, well, first of all, obviously my read, but also my attention and like what my, what I can bring to bear on a note. You really, in order to have ultimate freedom in your technique and in your musical ability, you need to have ultimate control, right? You have mm -hmm. to know exactly what's going to come out when you put your read on and you have to control the beginning, the end, the middle, the shape, the intonation, just everything should be in your control. So that this is basically what it's doing. It's as well as teaching you control, it's also showing you what you are not right now in control of, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. So would you try it one more time? When you, Even when you're doing the trill, it's da -y, like make sure the intonation is exactly right that you really get a whole step there. Um, and then what was it? I was gonna say, oh, while you're doing this type of exercise, make sure when you're moving to the pit, the next pitch, that you use the same articulation. So, for example, if in that first, if you're slurring G to C, make sure you slur that. Okay. Then da ta ta, and then you can rearticulate as you okay. do the duration. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think it's much more consistent now. And now that you've focused on being really consistent with the articulation and the end of the note and the sustaining of the note, now you can add in your musical ideas. Because before you would go, I heard bomb, 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 right? I very clearly heard the arpeggio in the bass line. And that's kind of gone now. Just one more time, maybe a little bit more fluidly, and da dee be ba be da ba ba be da ba 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 ba. Like really emphasize that now. great so now you just did a bunch of practice it's really good practice so now go back to the beginning of the trill section play through and see what happens when you get to that you know whatever half a bar that you've been practicing or bar and a half see what happens when you get there if you go back into old mode or if you automatically switch into this sort of like new very nuanced very careful carefully um worked on mode okay I heard it in there. It was more stable, I think. I agree. <laughs> Did your brain kind of go like, ah, when you got to that spot? Yeah. It did that at the beginning, too. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay, great. And then, so let's look at, um, yeah, will you just play the next, the next bit for me? Um, like, all the way through, like, just stop that there for now. Can you do that one more time? It was it was glitching a little bit, and, and I I know that you're not playing that out of tempo. It just was like, <laughs> eh, eh, eh. try it one more time. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you to you have you have ideas I want you to make them really obvious but what what I um, so this is the this is the banana of life I told you to play more centered and more full and with like a little more air and now you're like way over on the other end of like <laughs> all right okay so now we need to go back to the middle of what, a lighter articulation like a bouncier articulation still keeping the idea of playing in the middle of a sound and with a really stable core to the sound. Um, yes, planted on the ground, but a little bit more movement. So can you can you do that? Can you can you swing a little bit back toward the middle of the banana? <laughs> okay. I think 
that's really good. That kind of takes the best of both worlds and puts them together. I think that sounds really good. I do have one question. Okay. You're going da ba da ba be da di. Yeah. Da di da di da. So I I have not heard that very much, and um. I can't explain it very well, but what I what I like. What I tend to think is more successful in a performance is um ba ba bi ba di ba da bi di ba da bi di ba da ba bi da da ba da di da di da. Um, can you be because maybe this is why that that e natural to tenor d is a really resistant interval. Mm -hmm. That d does not want to come out, right? That's why we have flick keys. That's why um we we have to um a lot of people slur it, right? Because you can really, really like blow into it. Um, can you play from ba ba bi ba dim ba dum bi dim ba dum and do the opposite musical idea? Can you start quieter and get louder all the way to the C? Okay. <laughs> Can you, let's see, let's see if I can. Okay, so the, what I heard a little bit was. That's actually playing like across, like, um, think of paying the bar line a little bit and it should be. So. Like, can you do can you do it a little bit slower and then up to tempo? One more time. The it's it's key that the first note. B dom isn't isn't articulated uh, not T dom but D dom D dom T dom a very gentle articulation on the first grouping. Yeah, that's really nice. Can you play it in now in some dom B da ba ba beam ba da 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 ba. Yeah, I like that. I think it sounds good. How does it feel? I'm going to write that one down too. It feels more grounding, uh, focusing on the downbeats. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And another, another place, um, where I think, uh, I would also encourage that is instead of, does that make sense? Sorry. Apparently someone's calling my computer. Let me make that go away. <laughs> I didn't I didn't quite understand exactly um the last thing you said. Okay. Um I'm having sorry. Can't figure out how to get my screen to be big again. Here. Anyway, I can still see you and hear you. Um okay, so the other part that I was mentioning was um like ba ba be ba and then there's a downbeat instead of Okay. I think it can be done maybe both ways, but it has to be really obvious what you're doing and so that it, the C isn't louder than the B flat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> all right, one more, yeah, one more time. Try it one more time. Thank <laughs> you. 
encourage trilling from the upper note. Okay, can you play the whole lick then now all the way through the end? Okay. Uh, starting from where we just started? Yes. Okay. From the C. not the 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 stream isn't even enough um to to really help me out with hearing your sort of internal rhythm um okay. but this is a spot that's really tricky with those awkward trills and stuff to really um have the the quarter notes and the 16th notes be at slightly different tempos so just really you know just practice it with the metronome so what i'd like you i think we're um we probably should do a little bit of q and a now um but will you please play the whole exposition Okay. And that and that'll be it, just so we can get kind of like a, a big picture of what you've been doing. All right, thank you. Good luck with this year. I hope everything goes well with online, whatever you guys are doing. I don't know. You guys are in Canada. It's probably way better situation than we've got going right now. So. Oh, thank you. You too. Thanks. All right, Teddy. Great. Are there any so, <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Um, I choked on some water just now, but <laughs> so yeah, we have a few questions. <clears throat> sorry. Oh, let me take a sip. Um, first of all, I want to say that was um, very good. I thought you played really well, Chris. Um, but <laughs> Okay, so we'll move on to the Q&A section. So um, our first question is anonymous. They ask, what's the best practice advice you've ever gotten? Just to do it. It's, it's some days it's really hard to sit down and practice. And it's really hard to uh, do the right kind of practice. Um, but as soon as you... you you just have to do it. Of course, you can overdo it. It's really easy to overdo practicing if you're just hammering one thing over and over and over again and not making a change or not being critical about it. That's not helpful either. But if you really just practice every day, whether it's 20 minutes or an hour, um, just getting out the horn and familiarizing yourself with everything and, and, and you know, bringing your focused mind to it, that's, that's really it. Yeah, 
Thank you. I have oh. thousands of details, of course, yeah. about how to practice, et cetera, et cetera. But like, yeah. that's not really, the, yeah. maybe not what they're asking. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's see. Next question. Let me pull it up. Uh, this is from TJ. He, uh, he says, does your instrument present any challenges in your playing? And if so, what do you do to overcome them? Well, that's interesting. Um, I have a new-ish heckle. It's a 13, which means it was made in the 80s. Um, so it actually has like pretty, pretty good key work um, and is sort of, it doesn't really have any really bummer notes. Um, but over the last, you know, decades of playing it, um, I have chosen my fingerings to represent the sort of like maximum resonance for every particular note. So that, you know, there's, there's like three fingerings for tenor F sharp, right? Um, and there's um, different resonance keys that you can put down for various notes. And I really um, play a lot of fingerings that maybe aren't like taught normally, especially in high school or undergrad, um, because they are better in tune and they have a, a better resonance. So an example of that would be high B natural. I'd almost never play these sort of um, regular high B natural fingering because it, um, it, it, it's not in tune. It's, it's like, I just like 20 cents sharp. So here's the regular um, B natural fingering. And here's the one I play. So it's like considerably flatter. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's an example of something that I've had to do. Um, I also have really tiny hands apparently. So these keys were, um, these ones, my flick keys were actually up several millimeters, each of them, they were really, and I was having a hard time um, really bopping around up there. So I actually had the keys lowered so that my little baby thumb can reach them apparently. Didn't realize I had such small fingers. <laughs> <laughs> um, just out of curiosity, what is that, um, the, the flatter, more in tune B flat, uh, B natural fingering that you're using? Oh, um, okay, so left hand is the same, right? One, two, and B. Uh, on the back, B. And then on the right hand, it's A and F sharp on the back. Hmm. So I will, yeah. I will be trying that out too. <laughs> oh. it's, um, it's actually kind of on um, scales and stuff in technical passages. So sometimes um, I, I do have to fall back on the, the sort of regular one uh, if, if something's too fast to play. But after, you know, years and years and years of trying to incorporate it into my scales, I'm much um, faster around that note. Yeah, thank you. Um, so our third question is from Christian. He asks, or she asks, um, how much time do you study? So I'm assuming that's um, how much time are you, how much are you practicing every day? Um, yeah. um, it really varies. <laughs> when we are in sort of, full season mode of you know concerts every week and a lot of repertoire you know new repertoire every week that kind of stuff um the days that i don't have rehearsal i'm definitely practicing three or four hours and it's fundamentals and it's um, learning the new repertoire and making reads so this is included in that because when i make reads i'm also practicing and when i'm practicing i'm also making reads that kind of for, for me now it all goes together um on days that I do have rehearsals and concerts, I don't practice very much at all. I just do my fundamental warm up, which is probably 25 to 30 minutes um, because I really risk blowing out my chops. Um, and I have three little kids or young young children. And so uh, I make a point to be with them outside of their school hours. So that, that really restricts my practicing in the afternoons and evenings. So I get it all done early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, um, I hope that answers your question, Christian. Let's see. Um, we have a fourth question. Oh, it's from Karen. Um, that's my teacher. And she says, tell us about your read machines shut up and then in parentheses show us question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I could try. Um, here, let me move my bassoon so I don't knock it over. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, does she want me to go all the way down? To, oh, here. Oh, I can do it <laughs> this way. All right. So I have a Greg James gouger. This is a very cool gouger that, ugh, it's heavy. So you can see 
It actually has two long pieces that will fit over the edge of a gouged piece of cane and actually push it flat against the bed so that when the blade goes over it, it actually takes out, it makes, it makes the gouged piece of cane extremely consistent from end to end. Like, like, I mean, two hundredths of a millimeter variation, maybe. Mm. Like, it's really, really consistent. So that's fantastic. I love that. Um, and then for my profiler, I have um, this guy. This guy is a, this is a Greg James profiler. And you can see there's a piece of cane here. This is a template piece of cane that I've made on my Hertzberg profiler. And then I take a shaped piece of cane and I put it on this side and I go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it actually copies this onto this. So it's electric. It's fantastic. Mm, that's super cool. <laughs> so that has, I, when I was in school, I struggled a lot with um, wrist problems like a lot of scar tissue buildup, mm. a lot of pain, a lot of like days and weeks where I was like yeah, today or this week because my arm hurts and I can't brush my hair. Like any sort of uh, pulling mm. this way or this way would be super painful. So I've set up my machines and retools to be like as ergonomic and um, sort of physically healthy as possible. So I stand up to do all that stuff and I really try to make sure that, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I do very hertzberg e everything right shaper profiler all that kind of stuff so yeah um I, I mean just like just off the top of my head um i'm thinking like i've seen your um i've seen kind of videos of you and youtube talking about yeah. your remaking process um it's in your book a little bit so i just want to um, point that out tell people that you know they those things exist out there if you want to see more about her yeah, reads. Kristen jensen um, who's the teacher at ut she um uh, had a sabbatical and she arranged all these videos to be made and she came to Houston and we like, you know, we talked about the scripts and like really made it. Um, she, she did a great job like filming and editing and getting all that together. Um, and I was really happy to be a part of that. And it went along really well with this thing, which is my book. Um, and it, it's, it's a, it's a good companion. They go pretty well together. Yeah. And, um, if someone were wanting to buy that book, um, would it be available on like Amazon or, um, no, the really only place it's available is from the publisher, mm -hmm. which is on lulu.com, L-U-L-U.com. Mm -hmm. um, and just search the banana of life and hopefully it'll pop up. Great. Yeah. So um, for those of you who might want to be, who are interested in that book, um, I think we are, <laughs> I think we are done with questions. Um, Great. Yes. Great. So I think we will conclude soon, I want to really quickly talk about our amazing sponsor, Barton Cane. Um, so Dave and Julie there are amazing people. They have excellent cane. I use it personally. So many of these artists on um, Soon Zone have uh, used Barton Cane as well. They have t-shirts as well. If you're, um, So yeah, if you're ever in the market for GSP Cane, they have a huge, um, huge variety of shapes, profiles, different types of cane. Um, yeah, please check them out. Um, and they're still adding more different ones. Um, so yeah martincane.com and uh, with that i will end our stream today stay tuned for next week's artist and thank you everyone